This video will be demonstrating on knee examination. Start by washing your hand and introducing yourself to the patient. Briefly explain what examination you will do and obtain consent from the patient. Ensure there is adequate exposure, which ideally from the inguinal crest to the toe. However, for patient modesty, expose from the mid thigh to the toe. For inspection, we need to inspect anterior, lateral, and posterior aspect of the knee. From anterior aspect, look for any scar, erythema or laceration, swelling, wasting of quadricep muscle, and also the alignment of the leg for any virus or vulgus deformity. Laterally, check for hyperextension, fixed flexion, foot arch, and toe deformity. Posteriorly, check for any scar, erythema or laceration, popliteal swelling, wasting of calf or gastrocnemius muscle, as well as Achilles tendon abnormalities. Next, ask the patient to squat down. If the patient is able to squat down, this indicates that the patient has intact hip, knee and ankle joint. After that, ask the patient to walk and accept the gait for any abnormality, such as antagic, short limb, high stepping or trender lumbar. In sitting position, ask the patient to extend and flex the knee joint to assess the patella tracking and to look for any inverted J sign. The patella takes an inverted J shape as flexion is initiated from a fully extended position. Presence of this sign indicates small tracking of the patella. Then, ask the patient to extend and flex the knee once again while feeling the patella region to find evidence of crepitus, which one of the signs of arthritis. Moving on to the next part of the examination, which is feel. In lying position, ask the patient first, is there any pain around the knee or other parts of the leg? Then, proceed to feel the temperature on the leg and compare the both sides. Warm could indicate presence of inflammation. Cold may indicate nerve or vascular damage. Next, assess any presence of fluid effusion by doing fluid shift test and patella tap. For fluid shift test, gently press the medial part of the patella and move the hand in ascending motion and circling around up to the suprapatella patch towards the lateral part. Once reaching the lateral part, Look for any bulging movements at the anteromedial part of the patella, which indicates presence of fluid. For patella tap, assess the fluid by placing one hand superior to the patella with slight downward pressure towards the suprapatella pouch. Use fingers from the other hand to push onto the patella. The patella will bounce off if there is an effusion. Then, check the facet joint tenderness by pushing the patella medially and laterally. Look at the patient facial expression to find hints for tenderness. Then, flex the patient's knee to assess any signs of tenderness by palpating the tibial tuberosity, the patella tendon, the patella, medial joint line, medial femoral condyle, suprapatella pouch and quadriceps tendon, lateral femoral condyle, lateral joint line, and head of fibula. Movement of the knee. Ask the patient to lift the leg up with hips flexed and knees extended for about 30 degrees. This is to look for hyperextension of the knees. If present, record the amount of hyperextension. Next, ask the patient to fully flex the knees and hip actively to assess the possible range of motion. Then, flex the hip and knee passively to record the passive range of motion. Special tests. With the knees in 90 degrees flexion, check for posterior sagging and test for anterior and posterior drawer tests. To look for posterior sagging of the tibia plateau, inspect from the lateral aspect of the knee. 
Normal knee will give rise to convexity of the anterior aspect of the knee, while a posteriorly sacked tibia plateau will give rise to concavity. For anterior and posterior drawer tests, place the patient's leg together and sit on the patient's feet to stabilize the legs. Palpate the hamstrings to ensure relaxed hamstring muscle. Draw the tibia plateau anteriorly and posteriorly to assess the amount of anterior and posterior translation of the tibia plateau. Positive anterior drawer test indicates anterior cruciate ligament injury, while a positive posterior drawer test indicates posterior cruciate ligament injury. With the knees in 20 to 30 degrees flexion, test for Lechman's test. For Lechman's test, fix the femur with one hand and hold the proximal tibia with the other hand to translate the tibia anteriorly. Lechman's test is positive when the tibia is anteriorly translated. This indicates anterior cruciate ligament laxity. With the knees in full extension, test for valgus and varus stress tests. For varus stress tests, Put one hand on the medial side of the knee and push laterally while the hands holding the lateral malleolus is pushed medially. Virus stress test is positive when there is widening of the lateral gap or presence of pain. For valgus stress test, put one hand on the lateral side of the knee and push medially while the other hand holds the medial malleolus and push laterally. Valgus stress test is positive when there is widening of the medial gap or presence of pain. This elicit the medial and lateral collateral ligament laxity with involvement of anterior cruciate ligament laxity. This test can also be done in 20 to 30 degree knee flexion which will purely assess the collateral ligament laxity only as the stabilizing action of the SEL is eliminated. Lastly, for Maxmeray's test, testing for meniscus injury, hold the patient's knee with one hand at the knee joint line and hold the heel with the other hand. To test the medial meniscus, allow full flexion of the knee. Then, the foot is externally rotated and at the same time, a valgus stress is inflicted on the knee. Extend the knee slowly while maintaining both forces throughout the test. An injury to medial meniscus will produce a clicking sensation while extending the knee with or without pain on the medial joint line. To test for lateral meniscus, allow full flexion of the knee. Then, the foot is internally rotated and at the same time, a virus stress is inflicted on the knee. Extend the knee slowly while maintaining both forces throughout the test. An injury to the lateral meniscus will produce a clicking sensation while extending the knee with or without pain on the lateral joint line. To complete the examination, perform a neurovascular examination of the lower limbs and feel for the peripheral pulses. Thank the patient and summarize the finding.